Water, the most important molecule for life. But when it's present at large enough volumes, it can destroy that life as well. Hi, my name is Vinay Chimoen, and this double-edged nature of water is what forms the crux of the environmental issue that has plagued South India for the last five years over the Mulla Periyar Dam. The stakeholders are the neighboring states of Tamil Nadu and Kerala. The dam provides drinking water and irrigation water to a lot of villages in Tamil Nadu. Although the dam itself is located in Kerala, it is operated by the Tamil Nadu government. If the 120-year-old dam were to collapse, millions of lives of Kerala people would be put at risk in towns such as Iruki or Kolamava, which are downstream from the dam. At the heart of this debate lies the 999-year-long lease agreement signed between the British government and Tamil Nadu in 1886. Throughout this documentary, I aim to show how the British word set over a hundred years ago still splits up India today. I'm going to prove this by analyzing this issue through four lenses. Narrative, identification, representation, and power. Let's start with the narrative, and the best place to start is the 2014 Tamil historical drama, Linga. The movie is based on the struggles of the Tamil people in constructing the Mulla Periyar Dam. Before the dam's construction, villagers had to walk six to eight miles per day just to get water. People were dying and committing suicide due to the lack of water. <laughs> The movie then fast forwards to today. Ultimately, the movie does support Tamil Nadu, deeming the dam structurally safe, which makes sense since the movie was in fact filmed in Tamil Nadu. However, it does question whether or not the dam is structurally safe, bringing the Kerala narrative into the picture as well. The Kerala people also helped in creating the dam, but are not in the geophysical location to truly enjoy the fruits of it. If we were to focus through the lens of identity, we would see the face of John Pennycook. Now I know what you're thinking, why would Indian people identify with some random white guy? Well, hear me out. John Pennycook was a British engineer who was in charge of the construction of the Mulla Periyar Dam. Due to flooding, the British withdrew their monetary support since they no longer saw financial profit. As we know, the British exploited India under the East India Company with the idea of if you're not using the land at high production value, you need to be taught how to use it. However, Pennycook realized just how crucial this dam was to the Tamil people, so he sold his wife's jewelry and property to continue the work. Pennycook is revered to this very day in Tamil Nadu as one of the only fair British men to treat Indians with respect. His picture hangs in many households and his statue still stands high. Many children are named after him. He is a symbol of standing up to oppression and not blatantly sacrificing moral standards in the name of capitalism. Because of this strong identification with Pennycook and the dam, Tamil Nadu vehemently opposes the removal of the dam. Since Kerala lacks this identification with the dam, they see no problem with removing the dam. We can crystallize this image even further by seeing how Tamil Nadu and Kerala battle for representation. The Kerala Center for Earth Science Studies released a report saying that the dam could not withstand an earthquake above 6.0. Tamil Nadu responded by invoking the 999 year lease, denying Kerala's desire to construct a new dam. Let's go back to that 999 year long lease. It was brokered by the British and 1886, which gave Tamil Nadu the right to use the dam even though it was located in Kerala. In response, Kerala said the lease was inherently unfair since it was brokered by the British, who had ulterior motives. And finally, to see how power intertwines with this discussion, look no further than the Empowered Committee. In 2010, the Supreme Court of India created a five-membered Empowered Committee to deem the final verdict on the issue. To keep the power evenly distributed, Tamil Nadu and Kerala would nominate one member each. After a long string of legal battles for power, the committee made a decision. The dam can be used after making certain repairs. Thus, we can conclude that Kerala has physical ownership, but not legal power in this dispute. The power lies in whose needs are met by the empowered committee, and it's clear that Tamil Nadu's needs were fully met. Throughout this video, I've shown how these two groups' narratives, identities, representations, and power have shaped today's environmental policy. Even though there's a temporary consensus from both sides thanks to the Empowering Committee's intervention, there are still hot words being exchanged between Tamil Nadu and Kerala. Kerala still trying to get that new dam built. And it's important to remember the root cause of this problem, whether or not the British word still holds value today. If there had just been one clause saying to reconstruct the dam every so often, or to have it evaluated by the people actually affected by it, all this conflict could have been avoided. Unfortunately, that's not the case. I end with a quote from Pennycook. 
I am going to be only once in this earthly world. Hence, I need to do some good deeds here. This deed should not be prorogued nor ignored, since I'm not going to be here again. The character of Raja Lingeshwaran, played by Rajnikanth and Linga, is inspired by the life of John Pennycook. <laughs>